Hello friends. So today we will see control sequence for very important instruction where we will be using relative mode. So in relative mode, what we basically do, we uh, in generally we use relative mode whenever we are performing any jump. That may be conditional jump or unconditional jump. That time we use relative mode. So hope you remember the concept of relative mode, right? Suppose we used to write, sorry, we used to write JMP L1, right? So JMP L1, this L1 will take me to some instruction whose level is L1. Here some instruction is there. Then as part of execution of this instruction, what we used to do, we used to generate the, we used to allocate, means um, give PC the address of your target instruction. So how do we do that? That whenever we are executing this instruction, by that time, PC will become, uh, PC will be pointing to the next instruction. So from this next instruction, how far is your branch instruction is located? That is encoded in this L1. And then what we used to do, whenever we execute this jump instruction, PC's content will be added with this one. And if I need to jump this side, uh, what is that? Jump backward then what I will do, I will add a negative offset because if this address is 2020, this is 2024 and say this is your 2000. So if it is 2000, then from 24 to go to 2000, I need to add with 2024 minus 24. Then only I can go to 2000. So that minus 24 will be encoded in this L1. That will be stored in the address field of the instruction so that we will bring from the instruction will add with the pc and that is the execution part of this relative mode instruction here well i will do it our assumption is that our instruction is one word that means inside the instruction only i am going to get the offset or the address part of the instruction so first i will uh, fetch the instruction so pc out mar in read select code add dad in dad out these steps are already known so i'm not going to repeat now see once the instruction is brought from the memory we got to know it is a relative mode instruction and we need to jump to level l1 so uh, we need to update the value of pc without checking any condition because jmp is unconditional jump it is similar to my high level language programming go to statement just go to the level l1 so now to go to this level L1, we can't jump physically. It is your logical jump. How the logical jumps are performed? By uh, updating the values of PC. So for that, what we will do? Uh, that's with this L1, means with this address field of the instruction, we will add the value of PC. Please do understand, whenever you are executing this instruction, say it is at 2020. Uh, Next instruction's address is what? 2024. So by the time instruction has come into IR, PC is already pointing to what? 2024. With this 2024, I will always perform an add. If I need to go this side, it will be a negative quantity. If I need to come other side, it will be a positive quantity. And this quantity is there in the address part of the instruction. So right now PC value is 2024, right? Now see, one big point today I am going to um, tell you. The big point is that always we do this thing, na, why in? What is the benefit of that? Because till now we have not seen any benefit. But always incremented value of PC is always given to Y register. Why it is done? Today you will see. See, now I need to perform what? PC's content plus offset. So PC's content I need not have to give to the ALU because already updated value of PC is there in Y register due to my this step 2. You see this properly, in step 2, PC's content is given to Y register. That means that 2024 is there in Y register. With this, I will add the offset. What is the benefit of doing this? I will come to that. Then address field of IR out. So address field of IR out will be given on the bus. So it is on the B input. Now PC's content is there on the Y input, means in the Y register. So I'll bring it in the A input of the ALU. How can I do that? Select Y, then add, then ZIN, right? So here that ZIN is missing, it is ZIN. 
and then after this Z in the uh, uh, means the updated value is there in Z register. Now the uh, updated value of Z register means the uh, target address we need to give it to PC. So Z out PC in end. So see here, prop, uh, you need to see it carefully. We have given a new value into the PC by executing this instruction without checking any condition. And what we know, whenever we do any coding, mostly we will be performing your branchings, means jumps we will be doing. So but the most frequently part that we used to do in our coding is jumping. We'll do something sequentially for three, four instruction, then again we will jump. Again we will do it, again we will jump. So this is actually many times we are doing it. This is how our programs are consisting. Means small, small loops are there, right? Small uh, that uh, input output statements are there, some assignments are there, then some loop part is there, again this, then again loop parts. That means what? More frequently you are performing a jump instruction rather than your sequential ones, right? So whatever we do most frequently, that part we should do efficiently then only our execution will be done at a faster rate. So due to that, uh, here we are keeping the updated value of PC in Y register because most of the time we'll be executing jump instructions. So if it is a jump instruction, then it will be giving me a benefit. How come this benefit is coming? Here, if this is not done, if it was not done in this step, then here you require one more step. In step four, you need to write PC out, then Y in. Then step five will be this one. Step six will be this one. So you require one more clock cycle. So that will take some time. So, and by uh, storing the updated value in PC, we are not doing any harm. Rather, we are saving our time for uh, jump instructions, right? And here we are not taking any extra time also. In the same clock pulse only, this is done. So the point is, if I am doing something that is not disturbing others, not taking extra time, but it may lead to some benefit, then it is always advisable to do so. So because of that, this Y register is uh, given the updated value of PC. And see, because of this, my address generation part in my jump instruction becomes faster. Instead of three steps, it is taking two steps, right? So this jump instruction is clear. Now, next I will be doing relative mode, another example, where we will be doing conditional branching, conditional branching, conditional branching, how it is performed, it checks the result of its previous instruction. Some instruction is there before this branch, less than zero L1 instruction, some instruction is there. So that instructions results we will check. If that instructions result is less than zero, less than zero means what? Result is negative. Negative means what? N flag or sign flag value will be one, right? Then only you perform this. And when you are not going to jump to L1, when N flag value is zero, or in some cases we used to call it as sign flag also. Both are having the same meaning. Some people used to say negative flag. Some people used to say sign flag. If the sign flag value is zero, that means the result is positive. N flag value is zero, the result is positive. So you should not perform a jump. Rather, you should execute the next instruction in sequence. So now we'll see how to do it. First, we will fetch the instruction. Okay, this part is clear to us. So again, I'm not repeating, done. Now, after instruction is brought into your IR, we got to know it is a conditional branch. So we'll proceed with the generation of target address. So address field of IR out, select Y, add. This part I have done. Now see, the result is also in Z register. Done, but if n equal to zero, that means the result of previous instruction is positive, then you should not perform a jump. So this result should not be given to PC, right? So if n equal to zero, then end. All these are done in one step, so it is not creating any harm by doing this, though n equal to zero. So if n is zero, then we are not going to uh, update the value of PC. So PC is having the address of next instruction so that it will carry on, right? Here we have ended. So next instruction will start from this address. Done. But if it is not so, that means n equal to 1. That means the result is negative. Then what I will do? 
updated value of PC is in Z register that I will give to PC. So Z out, PC in, then end. This is as part of execution of this instruction. So see, here we have done branch less than zero. If at all, you need to do branch equal to zero. Then what you have to do? Instead of this end flag, you need to change the flag. Which flag will come? Here your Z flag will come. You remember Z flag? Z flag value is one. If the result is zero, all the bits in your result is zero, else it will be zero, right? Z flag value will be zero if the result is not zero. But if all the bits of your result is zero, that means the value is zero, then Z flag value will be one. If the flag value is one, you are going to perform this. And if it is zero, you are going to end here. What I'm trying to explain, branch equal to zero. So see, if I have the idea how to do conditional branching, depending on the condition, you go for checking a particular flag because how to check the result of previous instruction by checking the content of flag register and that is easier to do, right? So hope this part is clear. So this is about relative mode. Again, I would like to mention one more point. Here my assumption is that in both the examples, we have taken our uh, that, uh, that what is that offset part in the instruction is itself because the length of my instruction is one word. In both the examples, we have done like this. So this is all about your relative mode. Hope you are getting from my explanations the control sequence for your relative mode uh, instructions. So thank you. And if you are getting from my videos, then please like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.